Hello, Ganesh. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us here, Brandon. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So before we jump into talking about covalence and all of these, you know, things you're doing and really learning about it, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm sure my audience is curious um, who you are, like what's your background? How did you get into the space? Um, so yeah, give me a little bit of detail. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a physicist by training. I used to work on cancer drugs in the pharmaceutical industry for about half my career. Uh, that's actually where the word covalent comes from, which is a kind of chemical bond. And uh, mm -hmm. the one challenge with pharma is that it takes about five years to get a product out into the market. And most of my peers from engineering school were starting companies, getting funded and going through an exit in two years or less. And I kind of missed that action. So I pivoted my career to the big data space. And for the past decade, I've been uh, building and deploying uh, really huge databases and data sets. So that's where I cut my teeth. And about three years ago, we found this opportunity to bring our big data expertise into the uh, blockchain space. So that is the genesis story for Covalent. Nice. So wait, have you been in the space for you know very long, or is it just co Covalent that you've um, you know worked on, or have you been with uh, other crypto companies prior? No, my. Uh, Covalent is the first crypto experience I've had. And how I entered mm -hmm. into the space is quite accidental. We showed up at a database hackathon and we built this database connector to the blockchain. It wasn't even crypto related. And we ended up winning that hackathon and starting a company around it. So I would say it's just by chance that I uh, find uh, myself in the crypto space. Uh, but yeah, besides that, I've, uh, I'm, I'm relatively a newcomer, but I've been around for three mm -hmm. years. Uh, you know, built through the bear market, which I think uh, uh, is different from a lot of new entrants in the space uh, today. Was there anything in particular that like, you know, piqued your interest that made you say, damn, like, I really want to get into this space or this is really cool. Like, I know for a lot of people, sometimes it's an investment into like Bitcoin or they were doing mining back then or um, they they just saw all the different angles you could take it with the technology was like so was there anything like in particular i guess that you know uh made you want to get in the space more than usual i would say it's 100 percent ethereum uh because with bitcoin the use case is very primitive it's just transfers back and forth is not a lot of mm -hmm. scope for data with ethereum every single application is completely unique which means the schema and the, the variety and the diversity of the data is huge. And that's what made it very interesting and very compelling because I, I knew or I had a hunch that if this took off, it's going to matter a big deal. So that's the reason mm -hmm. I, uh, I that's, that's what attracted me. Ethereum is what attracted me to the space, the smart contract features. Yeah. How knowledgeable are you? No, no, God, I can't talk. Knowledgeable are you, um, you know, in terms of like what's going on with Ethereum, like with the NFTs and everything and the um, DeFi and stakings, there's a lot of things cropping up on, you know, just Ethereum that's really kicking off a bunch of different niches in this space. Yeah. So uh, data science and research is a, is a passion of mine. And uh, we are one of the premier uh, data providers for a lot of the projects in the space. So we have a research desk and we do uh, tons of research with uh, who's using these products, where's the traction coming from, is it the same close set of uh, people in the bubble or their new entrants? And we put out uh, really interesting charts uh, every day. And then we also co-publish with Cointelegraph and a couple of publications in, in Vietnam, Vietnamese and Spanish and, and Japanese. So I would say uh, we're up to the neck with data. We're probably one of the most uh, well-rounded teams out there in this space that understands what's going on behind these protocols. Do, do you think there's longevity with Ethereum? Like, is that a place that you think people are going to continue like building and experimenting with? You know, I would say we have to reframe the question there because Ethereum is not a piece of technology. It's an idea. It's a community. And so mm -hmm. if you see what has happened with Ethereum over the last year or so, they've abandoned a lot of the core ideas with what made Ethereum 2.0, 2.0, and they've adopted ideas from other communities and Ethereum has just moved on. So what that means is that the underlying technology and the core pieces 
don't matter as much as keeping the narrative cohesive and keeping the community together. So if, if that happens to be near protocol technology branded as Ethereum, then that is what Ethereum mm -hmm. is. So I would say Ethereum, the community is going to be around for a very long time. Whether the technology scales or not is still uh, doubtful. Yeah, I think that's kind of the key is like, can that community stay together? The problem with Ethereum is they can never come to consensus. Like the whole Ether 2.0 is just like one, you know, problem they've had, like, you know, over the years in terms of coming to consensus on what to do. Um, you can go back as far as the the DAO hack when uh, that happens and, you know, you had Ether split into Ether Classic and you had the, the, the big rift in the community. And it's just been like one of those focal points in like all of blockchain where it's like highlighting like when a blockchain gets like really big and it's really popular and there's a lot of different you know ideas in the space sometimes the consensus doesn't actually happen so it's one thing that worries me the most is that they won't be able to evolve um the foundation's not going to lead properly and then you know other blockchains are going to pick up the slack and take away market share so you know um i agree with you on principle but i have a different take on this and yeah i think what ethereum is trying to do is they're trying to push the boundaries of what's possible with decentralization. It's not like a startup that has a finite runway and they have to show growth and hit the metrics for their next round of funding. They're more of a research organization than a commercial deployment. And so I think it's a blessing in disguise that they have delayed their plans. This has uh, led room for a lot of layer two solutions. If you look at the traffic, on, uh, on Polygon, for example, it's insane how much action that's going on. And that's because of the gap that's in Ethereum. There's no clear connecting dots between what is Ethereum today and what Ethereum will be uh, with 2.0 maybe next year or the year after. Yeah, I think there's no doubt that Ethereum has really pioneered most of the space. I just, I don't think that they're going to be able to go as commercial as, you know, most people want to see anytime soon. I think they'll get there eventually. I just think that there's better blockchains and protocols out there that, you know, fundamentally have a, a little bit of an edge right now. And given all the questions and the high fees and the usability and um, some of the issues, I, I think it's a really interesting time where it could go either way. Um, I don't know, maybe you're seeing it the same way. No, I actually agree with that idea because the whole ETH is the ultimate chain is not mm -hmm. what you see in society. People are diverse. Use cases are diverse. My expertise is in the database world. And in the database world, you have uh, databases from Apple and Google and Microsoft and Oracle and SAP. There are lots of databases. In fact, there's a website, dbdb.io, which is a database of databases, and it has a list of over 600 databases. And these are all thriving multi-billion dollar businesses, right? So mm -hmm. I think in the blockchain space, it's going to be the same. You're going to have lots of lots of databases. Uh, Ethereum will have its own set of use cases. But if you're looking for higher security or you're looking for faster throughput or for something like games or for something that's transferability, something that's regulated, there's going to be a blockchain for every single use case. There just cannot be a one blockchain that fits all use cases. That's just not practical. Have you looked at other blockchains that you might consider, you know, promising in terms of picking up some of that slack that's Absolutely. You know, occurring? So the covalent product is an API. And mm -hmm. uh, what the API does is it pulls out balances and positions and transaction, historical granular transaction activity uh, across multiple blockchains. Uh, the reason uh, developers come to covalent is because it's one unified API across multiple blockchains. So under the hood, we actually index about eight different blockchains. So besides mm -hmm. Ethereum mainnet, we also have support for Polygon, which used to be called Matic. We have support for Avalanche. We have support for Binance Smart Chain, Phantom. And then soon we'll have support for Near and Eldron and Scale and all of the Polkadot ecosystem uh, chains mm -hmm. like Moonbeam and Edgeware. And there's just a lot out there. Yes, definitely. You know, we have a, 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 an interesting vantage point when it comes down to uh, measuring the traction of these blockchains. Yeah, let's let's talk about Covalent a little bit more because I'm curious, like, what is it exactly and like, what does it do? 
Great question. So Covalent is not a chemistry related uh, company. We don't make uh, <laughs> drugs or anything of that know. sort. Could have been. Uh, but it's just a, a little bit of a homage to my uh, my prior, prior career in uh, physical chemistry. So Covalent mm. bonds is, a, is one kind of uh, chemical bond. So what Covalent does is uh, we provide an API. Uh, that's our product. And the API mm. uh, lets you read uh, balances and positions and transaction activity across dozens of blockchains. One of the biggest misunderstandings about the space blockchains is that all blockchain data is public. You can go look it up on Etherscan, but actually that's not true. The data is a mess. So the analogy here is we're like a Google, like a Google search engine where there are billions of web pages out there. But if you just want a recipe for chicken noodle soup, you're not going to go uh, through thousands of websites and look for that recipe. You would just go to this one website and search for the recipe, and then boom, you have your answer. So Covalent provides that kind of service for the data that's on the blockchain. So that's, uh, that's mm-hmm. basically what Covalent is. We've been building since 2017. The first two and a half years uh, was, was tough, bear market, no customers, mm-hmm. no revenue, nothing of that sort. 2020 DeFi summer hit. All of our KPIs went through the roof, uh, became profitable, uh, started closing customers left, right, and center, uh, couldn't keep up with demand, uh, went out and raised our first round of uh, institutional capital, uh, scaled the company from just two people Mm -hmm. to about 30 people, uh, which is what it is today. Uh, And yeah, we have over 100 customers today, all the big names in the space, Xerox, Zerion, NFTX, and so on and so forth. So that's uh, that's what Covalent is about. Yeah, that's awesome. How how did you guys survive the bear market? Like, did you have like a contingency of funds, or did you have to cut back on developments, or like I don't know what was your guys' path through all that? Cause it was a mess. I mean, it was self funded. So uh, you know, the founders put up a bit of capital to bootstrap the company, and mm-hmm. uh, we just kept it super super lean. It was just two founders slinging code for two years. Uh, trying to mm-hmm. make things work and, you know, just refining and refining and refining until the market hit because we had the conviction that a product like Covalent is necessary for the space. Uh, the risk that we are we we're, we're willing to take was that uh, the market is not there yet. So uh, the mm-hmm. market ultimately did uh, prove out to be uh, huge and massive. So, you know, I think we lucked out on that bet. Oh yeah, we definitely did. What makes Covalent necessary for the space? Like what, how does it, what's the benefit of being able to read this blockchain data? Like what what would it be for mostly like analytics or? Yeah. So, you know, out of the hundred plus customers we have today, maybe 30 of them follow into one of the buckets, uh, like a traditional use case. So I'll go into some of those use cases, but the other 70 customers uh, you don't even know what their use cases are. They all come with their own use cases. So imagine mm-hmm. what Covalent provides is a, is, a, is a tin of tomato sauce and some pasta, and whether you make lasagna or something else is up to you. So you're the chef in the kitchen cooking up today's dinner, right? So that's really mm-hmm. how we treat our customers. We give them the raw materials. But some of the biggest use cases, one could be taxation. Every DeFi trade is a taxable event, especially in the US and Canada. So you need granular historical pricing information of all of your transactions in order to calculate your liabilities. So that's a major use case. Uh, If you're using Coinbase or Binance or Kraken, you can just go out there and download a CSV of your historical transactions. But if you're using Uniswap or OneInch or one of these decentralized exchanges, that's not a feature that's natively built. So that's that's a feature that Covalent provides. Another big use case is the wallet use case. So we have uh, pretty much all the big wallets in the Ethereum space are using Covalent today. So Zerion, uh, Frontier Wallet. Uh, So the wallet use case is very interesting. Give me a list of your ERC-20 assets in my wallet and tell me what the portfolio value was over the last 30 days. It's a very simple question, but a very difficult answer. So... Uh, we provide a single solution, a single API that answers that question. So that's one use case. Investor dashboards is another use case. So if you have a list of uh, NFTs and you want to figure out what is the value of these NFTs or these basket of uh, NFTs, 
what is the uh, volatility? If I were to list this NFT, what would the, what is the price it would fetch me rather than going through an auction? Things of that nature. And of mm-hmm. course, you know, the same API works across uh, eight different blockchains. Uh, so it's one unified interface. So yeah, so that's basically what Covalent uh, is being used today. What What is it exactly that makes it difficult to provide a token data over 30 days? So the challenge is that even if your ERC-20 balance hasn't changed, the mm-hmm. US dollar value of that ERC-20 asset changes every every tick. So you not yeah. only need historical balances, which uh, you cannot get from the from the blockchain. Uh, I mean, you can't get, like it's difficult to get from the blockchain. It is on the blockchain. It just, it's difficult to get. But the pricing information is another major mess. So a lot of the pricing, uh, price discovery happens on centralized exchanges or these new DeFi tokens, they're on, uh, on DEXs. So you actually have to pull out uh, an aggregate price feed in order to get the historical uh, portfolio value. So that's mm-hmm. some, of, some of the challenges with that particular question. Yeah, the more I think about it, that that is a really difficult, challenging problem because, I mean, the price is made on exchanges and there's a lot of exchanges in different jurisdictions. And sometimes the prices, um, you know, are fluctuating quite a lot that, you know, you have like even arbitrage trades popping up all the time. So it's how do you yeah, how do you guys like determine like what the actual price is or do you like narrow in on, you know, just the U.S. dollar market or or, or what's the focus? We use a volume weighted average price. So we okay. just uh, get the top five exchanges, figure out uh, how much volume is being uh, traded on each exchange and uh, do a weighted average of the price across these exchanges. Okay, cool. So you just got, yeah, you guys just take an average of it. Yeah. So, okay. Who, who are your customers exactly? You mentioned a few of them. Yeah. So in the, in the wallet use case, it could be Frontier Wallet or XDFi. These are uh, two wallet uh, examples. So they. Uh, so what happens when you open up a wallet? You need to see a list of your assets. You need to be able to drill down into an asset and figure out uh, when was the time you acquired this, what is the current value, uh, if you were to sell it, what price would it fetch you, and so on. So all of those features are provided by Covalent. Uh, in the case of 0x and, uh, and Zerion, uh, you want to figure out uh, what is the you know, portfolio allocation, for example. In the case mm-hmm. of Chain Guardians or Terra Virtua, these guys are building investor dashboards for NFTs. So that's one example. Uh, we actually just spoke to another company called Tally. Uh, they're building governance dashboards. Uh, so you can check them out, wittally.com. So they let these guys who hold tokens participate in blockchain governance forums and vote against things and then give you historical analysis on what is the participation rate, how much... Uh, how much should we pay these politicians? They're they're called politicians because they're uh, they're governing, yeah. right? If it's just fair to call them that. Um, so that's another use case. Um, yeah, NFTX is another example where they tokenize NFT baskets. So their dashboard is powered by Covalent. Um, yeah, I mean we have like a hundred plus customers, so uh, lots and lots and lots of use cases. Yeah, that's really good. It's good to have, you know, a large customer base and to be, you know, doing that well, being only, what, three years old? Yeah, I mean, all of this has just happened in the last uh, seven, eight months, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. Before that, I would say we had less than five customers because there's no market. It's only in the last year or so that people have gotten so excited about uh, blockchains and crypto and uh, things of that nature. I know people have gotten incredibly excited. Obviously, the market's been on a on a tear ever since, you know, late December, beginning of the year this year, Um, you know, actually leads into a good question because, I mean, you're into obviously metrics and analytics and um, you get paying very close attention to to blockchain through Covalent. What's your thoughts on the market right now and where things are at? Because it's like at this, again, at this really interesting point where, you know, all these positive things are happening, um, all these different areas and niches are really starting to um, raise the, the market value of the entire market. And then you have um, all these companies buying Bitcoin and you have ETFs that could potentially go through, you know, all these things. We can talk about them forever. Um, and it just feels like we're going to have this next leg up in this, you know, pricing. 
but I mean, it's just also feels like it could like correct at some point because it's having a hard time moving. Like we're in this like, I guess, tight funnel. So I'm just curious from like your unique point of view, what you think, you know, might be going on and where we're at. I think the price is justified. The rise and the opportunity mm-hmm. is completely justified. If you look at the number of traditional institutions that are entering this space, it's through the roof. None of this was happening last year. If you look at the companies buying Bitcoin as part of their treasury, uh, which includes Square and Tesla and MicroStrategy, that is not something that happened last year. If you look at the number of products coming out, uh, this is uh, you know this is like 10x to a 50x increase in the number of projects and activity in this space. If you look at uh, uh, you know the institutional interest, the ETF interest, I think it's well deserved. But in the grand scheme of things, it's still a small fraction of what uh, the financial system can be. So I would say mm-hmm. we're still very, very early. I think the number of D5 users has just crossed 2 million users. 2 million users is what Facebook had in its first year. So imagine mm-hmm. how many orders of magnitude we need to grow before it starts to make a dent in the global financial system. So I would say, uh, yeah. you know, we're, we're very early, very ex- exciting to... Uh, to see how the next five years, but I can guarantee you you that the next five years is going to see more action, more growth than the prior five years. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Venmo announced that they were going to allow their customers to buy, sell, and trade crypto too. Like it's it's exciting, like all the different places you can go now. Because it, it was like just a year ago where you know we were still coming out of this bear market, and even before the the pandemic hit, and we weren't weren't here at all. A lot's happened last year. It's almost kind of crazy to look back at. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's another, another thesis of ours that DeFi and fintech will merge. The merge is, event- uh, is in inevitable. And whether that happens in the next five years or happens in the two years, uh, you don't really, you can't time markets, but it is mm-hmm. going to happen. And what you're seeing with Venmo, the next natural step for Venmo is to open an SDK that lets you uh, build interesting experiences on top of Venmo, then how is Mm -hmm. that different from a traditional DeFi app? It's the same thing. So then suddenly the lines are blurred. And for a company like Covalent, the addressable market completely explodes. So we have uh, access to all of Robinhood's users, which is in the hundreds Mm -hmm. of millions of users. So that's, that's when it gets really exciting. Yeah, DeFi is like one of those niches in blockchain that like gets me really excited because it solves like a really important problem and it does it almost in a really fluid way for being such an early technology. Um, you know, if I were, you know, a centralized exchange, I'd be kind of worried if I was a major tech company with a, a product like Venmo or Cash App, you know, something like that that could, you know, somewhat integrate. I'd be a little worried too, because it's like you don't need any of these centralized bodies anymore. Like it's gotten so real at this point that it's, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's definitely a good thing. I think we need less rent seekers. We need less, uh, mm-hmm. less intermediaries uh, and we need more transparency, uh, not uh, more opaque systems. The whole financial system is just one black box. And I don't mm-hmm. think anyone asked for, uh, asked for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. I guess we'll, you know, see how everything kind of shapes up. This has been quite a year so far. Um, but with Covalent, what's, what's on your guys's roadmap for like the rest of this year? Um, like, what do you guys have plans or, uh, that you have coming up that you, that you want to announce or can announce? Um, or do you have like a major partnership or new clients that you're you know, hoping to have? Yeah, no, this is a great question. But before I share uh, the roadmap, I, I think it's instructive to go back and see what the last six months has been for Covalent. So sure. I would say until last summer, uh, we were it was just a like a like a toy project for us in the sense that we didn't take it too seriously. Yes, we did work on it full time. Uh, the two founders worked uh, you know uh, seven days a week to to get this thing off the ground. Uh, but, you know, the market opportunity wasn't, wasn't that clear. But once that became clear and raising our round of funding, uh, the team has grown from three people to 30 people. So all of that is in the last six, seven months. The number of projects has gone from five people to 100 people. The number of blockchains we are indexing has gone from 
uh, just one blockchain to eight blockchains. So that has been our momentum. And then last uh, last month, we closed another round of funding uh, with the likes of Binance and Coinbase and Delphi and Hashed uh, in that round. So that was a strategic round to uh, close off some mm-hmm. of the gaps. And then what's coming up is uh, next week, we have our public sale. Uh, so we're doing a public token sale on CoinList. Uh, the unfortunate uh, thing there is Americans and Canadians cannot partake, uh, but this is the first real opportunity for the retail audience to uh, acquire the covalent tokens and be a part of the covalent project. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's on the 29th of April. Uh, all of the information is accessible on the CoinList website, including all of the metrics and the lockup schedules and the token prices. So that's coming up. And then uh, other things I can uh, I can share is uh, the network will be live. I can't share exact dates there, but the actual mm-hmm. decentralized covalent network will be live. So that's pretty exciting. There's a lot of anticipation uh, for that to happen. And then we're just going to go double down on customers. I think what uh, this this industry needs is more real use cases, more traction, more customers, more revenue, more clear lines of sight to revenue. I think that's what makes this industry uh, too good to ignore. And uh, that's what we're going to focus on because those are the attributes that made Covalent real. Uh, And so Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll uh, step off the gas on those attributes. So yeah, so that's what uh, this year is going to look for us. Sweet. Yeah, I'm familiar with CoinList. I actually invested in Filecoin years ago when they did their initial SAFT. Um, yeah, that took forever to come out. Are you guys doing it with a SAFT through CoinList or is it going to come out sooner than that? Or is it, what's the scheduled um, release oh, times for that? Within, within 60 days. Uh, so the oh, okay. SAFT things don't work anymore. Uh, your product has to be live uh, before you can do a public, uh, public regulated sale. So mm-hmm. that's uh, one of the challenges with uh, the new regulations. I think the days of the SAFT, uh, you know, unregistered securities offerings, uh, those are mm-hmm. done. So if you want to be compliant, you want to be taken seriously, uh, then you have to get all of your uh, uh, checks and balances. So our, uh, our stuff was ready last October, and it took about six months of compliance work uh, for this public offering. So, uh, so, you know, we are taking this pretty seriously. And that's what the, that's the caliber of the projects on CoinList, of course. Do you know what the ticker is going to be called? CQT, Covalent Query Token. CQT. Yes. Perfect. Well, I'm, I'm going to look for that because I, I like looking for new things on CoinList. Um, <laughs> so I'll probably grab a little bag of CQT for fun. Why not? Um, yeah, I'm, we covered a bunch of stuff and I got to get going and like, 10 minutes today's uh today's a tight schedule but anyways uh ganesh thanks for taking the time to come on the podcast i know there was a little bit of scheduling issues before that but um you know i appreciate you taking the time working through it and um i, I think covalent is really interesting i think there's a lot of people that will be curious to you know how the um how the coin list offering plays out and watching that carefully and how you guys interact integrate with all the other blockchains, uh, you know, gather uh, blockchain data and stuff like that. It's a really important part of the space. No one really dives into because everyone's always talking about, you know, you know, different prices in the space and uh, how everything's just going to go straight to the moon. Right. But no one always wants to dive into the analytics. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts on all that and the market. So, well, thank you for hosting us. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Anytime.